Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. It's Good Friday, the day we traditionally take to remember and somberly remember the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It's the day of uh, Him willingly being led to the cross, willingly bruised and beaten, willingly nailed to a tree to pay the penalty for you and for me. It's kind of one of those days where because we know the ending, it's uh, it's a good Friday, right? Otherwise, I'm just looking up something here. Otherwise, it wouldn't be good. It would be horrible. But because we know what comes and what follows, the good part of Good Friday is the result. Not the day, not, not how it all goes down. That part's not good, it's bad. But we should enter into that because that's our sin being taken and nailed to that tree. That's our death being died by someone who can effectively absorb the wrath of God that we could not to make a clear, make a way possible for us once again. So I'm going to read just a little bit in Matthew chapter 27, um, starting with verse 15. Now at the feast, of the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had that notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus? who is called Christ. And they all said, let him be crucified. And he said, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, he, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I'm innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And as the people answered, his blood be on us and on our children. He released to them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. The next section goes into the mocking that happens, the stripping, the beating, the uh, thorns on his head, the robe, and then pick it up again, verse 32. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots, and they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourselves. Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now. If he delivers him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The robbers who were crucified with him reviled him in the same way. Now at the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama, shaktam. It is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. One of them came and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. The other said, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs also were open. Many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. It's a lot of things to think about. You know, as you think about Jesus without a word, being led as a sheep to the slaughter, fulfillment of scripture, willingly led. They could have, with one word, one thought, destroyed them all. Being up there on that cross and being ridiculed, being mocked and saying, hey, if you come down, we'll believe in you. But because he was there for our sin, he had to stay there. He had to take it all. And in that moment of death, there's some kind of separation from a holy God that happened. It's the sins of the world were poured upon him. Kind of almost like you want to keep going. You don't want to end there. But that's the mystery. That's the, the power of Resurrection Sunday. It was dark. It was bleak. Jesus was dead. Till next time.